the supporters will ask, um, will this have any effect on the, on the playing side, for instance? Well, John has a budget, I mean, and he'll work to that budget. He, he's worked at clubs, you know, of a similar size to he's worked at Wickham, he's worked at Plymouth in the past. So, you know, budgetary control is not something new to John Gregory. Uh, all right, maybe at Queen's Park Rangers and Aston Villa, you know, the budgets were a little, little more lax. But uh, he's aware of the situation. Everybody's in this together, you know, and uh, it is a challenge. There will be some, in, in the summer, there's going to be some considerable changes, I would imagine, to the playing staff because we have a number of players out of contract. John will want to freshen up the squad. That's inevitable. That happens at all clubs. So there'll be a very tight budget. But the competitive budget, that our supporters will know that, you know, we can sustain a club in this division, in a healthy league position, uh, on the playing budget that we'll have. But the, the support area of the club, that's us, um, we're going to have to trim our cloth accordingly. So nobody will avoid the, the scalpel, so to speak. Uh, everybody's up for the challenge, you know, uh, is it going to be painful in certain areas? Yes, it will be painful. Some people might lose their jobs. But at the end of the day, we have to come out of this, you know, with additional strength and to ensure the future financial stability of the, your club. You know, uh, there's no easy action. There's no magic wand and uh, to wave and all of a sudden, if we could guarantee having a cup run like we had a few years ago where we played Manchester United and picked up close to a million pounds, that's fine. But we have to be very prudent. We have to budget for not progressing in the FA Cup or the Capital One Cup. You know, uh, the chances are that then if you have, you know, a positive variance to it because of the success, that's a bonus. But we have to run a very tight ship uh, and ensure that this club continues to be able to, you know, compete competitively in this division on and off the field. And obviously the club is still ambitious, you know, to, to reach well, the championship. Oh, well, we're not here. We don't want to tread water. I mean, maybe, you know, the reality is a couple of years in mid-table in the Division 1, you know, might be acceptable. But that doesn't mean we don't want to go into the Championship. And if there's an opportunity, a window of opportunity, then we will take it. But we can't chase the dream and throw keep throwing money at it. You know, uh, there were some suggestions that we bought our way out of the uh, conference. That may be true to a certain degree because we had a very high budget in those days compared to other conference clubs. But now we're, you know, we're in our second season in Division One. We know we've done some benchmarking exercises with other clubs. So what we're ask, being asked to do is sensible, prudent management, and we'll do it. And of course, uh, with the football side, you, you know, within the parameters <coughs> of the financial fair play, that's always got to be. Uh, a hit. Well, it is because you know the. Uh, cost um, of running a playing squad now increases the more you know com competitive you want to be and it's, it's inevitable I think that the clubs with the the biggest budgets invariably are the most successful clubs but you know we've got a very competitive wage budget now compared to a lot of clubs in this division and we have to ensure though on the gates of 3,300 we're, we're probably paying over the top uh, so we have to be realistic, John's very realistic, the board are realistic and so are the investors. So uh, I think from a supporter point of view, all I would say is, you know, trust us, the club's in safe hands, we're not going to allow, you know, the club to get into financial difficulty. That's the last thing we want, that we've been here before, some years ago, and it's not a pleasant task. But now, if we can, you know, trim the cost accordingly in a sensible manner, then we can look forward to start the building process again next year with renewed optimism and uh, there'll be new places coming in on the playing side which is inevitable so yeah I'm optimistic it can be done without endangering the future of the club and of course the supporters can help by persuading friends and family to come along as well and let's try and lift that average gate well that, works, that would be absolutely fantastic we have run a number of initiatives during the year but you know at the end of the day particularly you know the uh, season ticket holders and those who come regularly, yeah, we'd like to say a huge thank you for continuing your support. But if you can, please bring a friend, bring a colleague, bring another member of the family along. Let them experience, you know, the match day experience at Crawley Town Football Club at the Chucky Trade.com Stadium. And 
you know, it's good value for money, you know, compared to a lot of clubs. But, you know, winning a winning football team, playing attractive football is our aim. Is it easy to to produce a team like that? No, but John's up for the challenge as well. Um, we're scoring quite a few goals now where compared to the, uh, the previous uh, part of the season. So I say it's a challenge we're all up for, but I don't want supporters worried. They have an... All the supporters have an important part to play. It's all one big family, really. And if you can, please bring any further support to the club. Every person that comes into the ground, every pound that they spend when they come to the stadium, whether it be through the catering, whether it be a match programme, whether it be in the shop, helps build a stronger and more vibrant football club. And that's all we want. And I know that uh, you're in the process of organising a forum with, with John for the next couple of weeks. A date will be announced so the supporters can ask questions and... Yeah, I mean, I, I, I did one earlier in the season when I arrived. I, I quite enjoyed them, and I know John does. He's, he's up for that as well. And uh, I would imagine in the next two or three weeks we'll be able to have a forum where people can come along, along talk to John. I mean, I can talk. I do the, the surgeries. I've, I've spoken to supporter groups individually. Uh, but it's, it's John they really want to speak to. I mean, they've not had an opportunity. He's an experienced campaigner. He's been, you know, clubs in, of all shapes and sizes, you know, both in this country and abroad. Uh, and he's very enthusiastic about the, the future of this football club. But I say, all together, we can play an important part in keeping, the, you know, the ambitions of the club going forward. Um, we'd love to be in the championship at some point in the future. But first and foremost, we've got to ensure that the club functions with a, you know, from a stable financial background. And... Uh, Prudent management is the, you know, the byword, I think, uh, without being silly. And uh, I'm certain supporters will respect that and understand that fully. It happens in every business, and football's no different. But our core business has always been and always will be. The most important thing is what happens on the pitch. And everything that we do is triggered if we do get any um, further resources coming through, you know, improved performances, improved attendances, that enables us to put further money into team building. So that, that's, a vi that's vitally important for supporters to be aware of that.